upon a bed of straw slept the sovereign son of God Lord of the universe breathing the dust of earth wonderful Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. What a great day to be here to celebrate the, the, our Savior's birth. And, and, and so today we're going to be reading out of the Gospel of John, John chapter 1. And, and I know that sounds kind of strange for Christmas because we, we're all looking for that, that Luke 2 experience. But, but John also tells the Christmas story. So as we, we read that in our gospel today, listen to the Christmas story. Listen to how we know that the Word made flesh and dwelt among us. How that tells us about the joy of our Savior. We're glad that you are here. We're glad uh, and welcome those that are worshiping with us online. Thank you for being with us this morning. It, it, is, a, it is a beautiful day. It's another day that God has made, and, and we get to celebrate that today. Uh, we will be having communion uh, this morning, and so we'll, we'll be bringing you up here and, and serving you the feast, and we get to go then with joy and celebrate our Savior. Just a reminder, tomorrow there is a worship service, because tomorrow is Sunday. Sunday, all right? Um, there's a worship service at 9 a.m. Um, seminarian, second year seminarian um, Solomon Spangler will be here and leading worship uh, that tomorrow for us. Um, and it is, it's just a privilege to have him uh, join us and as he's studying uh, for his pastoral ministry call that, that he can be with us and, and, and working on sharing the word uh, tomorrow. So um, if, you, if you're here, please welcome him um, and um, just know that uh, his message is going to be uplifting because God works in uh, amazing ways. 
So with that, we're going to start this worship service. You can stay seated for our opening hymn. Gentle Mary laid her child lowly in a manger. There he lay the undefiled to the world a stranger. Such a babe in such a place.
Would you please stand for the reading of our gospel? The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Well, grace, mercy, peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, last night, we all know, it was Christmas Eve. And some of you were here. Some of you were here and worshipped with us. Some of you were elsewhere and, and with family and friends and were worshipping. There, there may have been all this, this stuff last night. There may have been candles and, and, and lots of music and maybe even a lot of special music. I know there were some churches out there that had special presentations last night. Well, we've been uh, going through these weeks leading up to Christmas, and, and we all know that it was probably the most busy time of our lives. You think about it, there were preparations to be made, there were gifts to purchase and, and, and to wrap. We, some of us had three sermons to write and to preach in two days. It's a busy time. It's a busy time for us all. Those people in school, they, they were either in classes and, and, and learning things. There were some students who were, who were still taking finals and finishing up the semester. There were teachers that had, had times of, of, of class prep to make and, and grades to get in. There were Christmas concerts to attend. There were parties to attend. The hustle and bustle, the, the running around, the stress, and even the, all those extra church services during Advent, all these things happen before Christmas even comes. So here we are. And you look around and you say, well, there's less people here than there were last night. There, there are no special musical presentations. There are, are no candles that we are going to hold and, and sing Silent Night to. It just seems today is just a lot less of a production. It's weird, isn't it? It's weird. After all, to, today is Christmas Day. Yesterday was just the evening before. Today is actually that big day, the actual day when we celebrate the birth of our Savior, the birth of Christ. Today is the actual day that, that we have been looking forward to for the last four weeks. Today is the day that we typically spend time with family and friends and, and, and the loved ones that we have in our lives and we feel the joy of the season. It's, it's today. Today is the culmination of all that preparation, all that waiting and that hoping in these last four weeks of Advent, of, of Christmas Eve and, and the lighting of the wreath. Today is that day that we have been preparing for. Today is everything. Yet, we have a much smaller group here today. And, and the worship service is, is much more ordinary than last night. And yes, you have the same guy that you saw yesterday standing up before you again today. 
is this a bad thing? Is this really a bad thing? Is it a bad thing that Christmas Day is less of a production? Is it a bad thing that we seem to get fewer and fewer people on, on Christmas Day with each passing year? Is it a bad thing that Christmas Day seems to fall in the shadow of that, those great, those great presentations, the great celebration of Christmas Eve? Is it really bad? I don't know what, what go, is going through your hearts, but some of you might be thinking, well, you, you know, we probably need to just simmer down and, and, and calm down and take a deep breath because it sounds like it's a terrible thing. But really, honestly, it's not. It's not a bad thing. Well, why not? Well, Jesus' birth wasn't exactly a big hoopla after all. It wasn't widely uh, attended. There was no major fanfare. There was no cheering from the crowds when Christ was born. It wasn't a big production. There wasn't a, a lot of special music and, and candles. In, in fact, if it wasn't for the shepherds that they came there who followed the, the instructions of the angels, no one would have been there except for Mary and Joseph and a few barnyard animals with their pleasant barnyard smells. Jesus' birth wasn't a big deal at all to those who were in Bethlehem. It was, in fact, it was a, a little less than ordinary. It was, it was hardly noticed by anyone. Does that make it a bad thing? It, it, it doesn't. Instead, it points us to a perfect backdrop of who Jesus is. It points us to his humble service. It, it points us to his boundless compassion. It, it points us to his selfless love. Jesus didn't ask for all the hoopla. Even though we, <laughs> we do it anyway. Jesus didn't ask for a giant production, although we, we look forward to it anyway. Jesus didn't even ask us to really recognize his birth. But yet we are here this morning, this Saturday morning, remembering. Jesus asks us to remember his love, his grace, his body broken for us, his, his, this new covenant in, in his blood, the welcome and forgiveness of sins that he showed to us and to others and, and even to strangers. He, he wants us to remember that all we do and, and all we do, we are reminded of that every time we come to worship, if it's on Christmas Day or not. We're reminded that of all this, of his love, his grace, his forgiveness, every time we come and take communion, every time we receive the feast, we're reminded of this every time we look at the face of a loved one, a relative, a stranger, an acquaintance. We're reminded of, of the, the work that God is doing in them and around them and the work that God is doing in us and around us. Oh, it's okay. It's okay that the service is, is on a much smaller scale. It's okay because it, it, it's cozier. It's more intimate. There's, it's more contemplative than last night. Yes, there are fewer of us here together, but we're worshiping and we're, we are remembering Christ. We are meditating on the words of Scripture and being reminded of who we were and what we are doing now. I was asked, why do you do this service? We don't get a whole lot of people here. It would be nice to have more people. But it's okay.
because I'm glad with what we have. And I'm glad with what we will have. I'm glad that God uh, has, has given us what he has given. He has given us all that we are, all that we do, all that we see. He's given us this love, this grace, this mercy. And really, isn't that what Christmas is about? Christ entered our world, and he entered our lives. Christ showed us the beauty in the ordinary, the plain, and today the quiet, mundane, ordinary life. It's not to say that yesterday's productions were, were not needed or were a waste of time. I'm not saying that by a long shot. It's just to say that, that God is here now. Emmanuel God with us. He is with us in the quiet just as God is with us in the loud. God is is here now. Emmanuel, God with us. He's with us in the ordinary and the usual just as God is with us in the big productions of life. God is with us now, with us. Emmanuel, in the slow and the calm just as he was with us in our hustle and bustle. Just knowing that God is with us, what he's promised to us, to how he chooses to live as one of us, that's what makes the Christmas celebration. It doesn't matter how many carols we sing. It doesn't matter how many Christmas productions we attend. What matters is why God came. Why we celebrate Emmanuel, the birth of a baby who will grow and redeem each one of us. That's why we are here. That's why we know God is in this place. Because God here is revealed to us God's love is surrounding us. God is showing us all all that that we need to know so that we here are in our community and when we leave in our relationships, in our service, we know that God is with us. Today we come and we receive him in the bread and wine. We we are shared this together. Because God is with us. He is one of us. He is blessing us. He is loving us and forgiving us now and forever. So on this Christmas day, in this Christmas season, may we always see the beauty of God's love in the quiet and in the loud in in the calm and in the moving, in the community, and even in solitude. May we always see and trust that God is with us. Emmanuel has been given to us this day, Christmas Day. All the stuff leading up to it. All the stuff leading up to this is what makes this day even more special. Because God is with us now. And he'll be with us always. So when we have an opportunity to say Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, why not remind him the love of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. In his name, amen. I invite you to please stand as we continue our worship service, as as we join together in community, as we join together confessing our Christian faith, his words, and confessing who God is with us. I believe in one God.
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Wonderful Counselor, you govern all things with wisdom, righteousness, and truth. Grant to your creation the joy of your presence that we may see you at work in our midst. Guide the nations of the earth to your Son, that all would know your salvation. Whatever the good news of great joy is announced this day, Lord, grant that lives are changed forever by the power of your Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. We rejoice that you have come unto us to draw us unto you. Almighty God, your power knows no limits you reign over all things, and yet in Christ you stoop down to save us. Give to us, your church, the power to declare your mighty deeds that throughout the world we can inspire others to feel, feel the, your joyful service in all that we do. We can inspire others to know of your grace and your mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. We rejoice that you have come unto us to draw us unto you. Everlasting Father, you embrace us and make us your children through faith in your only begotten Son. Bless all those who in any form of sickness or infirmity need your tender care. Heal the sick, bind up the brokenhearted, and grant your saving power to all who rest in you. This day we especially pray for Al and Amy and Becca and Bev and Carol, Diane, Ken, Kurt, Miles, Sue. We pray for Bill and Donna, Deputy McDonald, for Fred, Linda, Susan, Terry, and Vicki. We ask that you continually be with Joe as he is battling COVID pneumonia. And Heavenly Father, please be with all those who are traveling. Keep them safe to and from their locations and bless the time that they have with friends and family. Let us pray to the Lord. We rejoice that you have come unto us and to draw us unto you. Prince of Peace, you give us what the world can never give. Drive out all fears and doubts. Deliver us from all enemies, seen and unseen. Grant us solace in him whose blood has set us free, that we would be your people forever. Open our ears to the message of angels. Fear not, for you unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. We rejoice that you have come unto us to draw us unto you. Fearing and loving and trusting in you above all things, we entrust all of these prayers to your mercy, O Lord. For the sake of him whose birth we celebrate this day, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So since we are gathered this Christmas morning to hear God's word, to marvel and to receive him as he comes to us in his body and blood. Let us first consider our unworthiness before God and confess before him and to one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. That we cannot free ourselves from a, our sinful condition. Only God's Son, Jesus Christ, has set us free. 
from our fears and failures, from our sin and death, and, and he enables us to live forever as children of God. Let us then take refuge in the infinite mercy of God and seek his grace for the sake of Christ to say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive our sins and lead us to life everlasting. Amen. Well, Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son, born into this world on this Christmas, to live, suffer, and to die and rise again for you. For Jesus' sake, your Heavenly Father forgives you all of your sins. As your pastor, it is my privilege today to announce to you the message of grace unto you that Christ has commanded. And so I forgive you all of your sins in his name, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It was on the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also after supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. So hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. down from heaven humbly you came God of creation here with us in a starlit manger Say 
treasures shepherds bow down and your voices sing of peace on earth what am I to offer to heaven's king I will bring my life my love my You have come unto us, O Father, in this precious body and blood of Christ our Lord. Grant that we who have received your salvation rejoice in you all of our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so together we reply, unto us, unto us. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And so we go and we celebrate Emmanuel, God with us. We go and we say Merry Christmas, and we share the joy of Jesus born to us. And so the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.